I'm in Akureyri, Iceland, at the International Arctic Social Sciences Conference. I'm talking to Alona Yefimenko of the Arctic Council Indigenous Peoples Secretariat. Tell us about the role of the Arctic Council Indigenous Peoples Secretariat at this conference. Uh, my name is Alona Yefimenko, and I'm uh, half Chukchi, half Evin. I'm originally from Russia, from Kamchatka Peninsula, from Korak region. And here in Akureyri, I'm representing the Indigenous People Secretariat of the Arctic Council. The Secretariat, which, is, which was uh, created to support the six permanent participants, Indigenous Peoples Organization of the Arctic Council. This uh, Secretariat uh, was especially created um, in the beginning of the 90s, where the Arctic uh, Protection Strategy was uh, created for the environment. All the Arctic countries were concerned about the uh, bad environmental situation in the polar region. And the indigenous people's organizations were uh, very often uh, um, addressing their concerns at the meetings. And finally, when the indigenous people's secretariat was created, the possibility for many indigenous organizations uh, came to reality. The indigenous people's uh, of the Arctic started to visit the uh, international organizations and talk about the problems. They didn't only talk about the, their problems in the environment, they talk about their culture, about their language, about their health, about the animals that they hunt, about the species that they are um, uh, you know, using on a daily basis, like reindeer herding, fishing and uh, gathering. There don't seem to be too many indigenous people at this conference. Could you say why that would be? Today I'm not uh, meeting many people from indigenous uh, territories. And I think it is important for them to be here because it is about them. It is uh, for them and for the future generations of indigenous peoples of the Arctic. Does the Arctic Council provide for attendance at conferences like this? Is there any way that the Arctic Council could, for example, provide assistance for education at higher level to train indigenous people as social scientists? Yes, we have the uh, um, Working Group on Sustainable Development, which has uh, several programs on education, language, on the suicide, on the health. And the education is not a very uh, priority of the uh, uh, Arctic Council so far because of the funding, because of the uh, lack of uh, something else. But uh, I think that the, in the future Arctic Council has a very a good ambitious uh, intent to uh, promote uh, such issues like uh, education and health. But um, so far it is still a problem. Education is uh, the main uh, issue not only in the third countries, like uh, Russia, still Russian North is the poorest, I think, in, in the Arctic, uh, in the Arctic region. And um, what we have to do is uh, to invite the community teachers, to invite the community um, indigenous uh, leaders to talk about this, why it is important to have um, education on the agenda of the Arctic Council. How concerned are you? for the future of indigenous people in the Arctic region? I think it is, uh, it is a it's very worrying um, feeling that uh, in the future the indigenous peoples will be, uh, will be just uh, normal European people without language, without uh, culture, without knowing who are the ancestors are. Um, they are going to disappear because of the uh, uh, lack of attention from the, their governments, lack of attention from the, uh, maybe from the um, international uh, uh, media, from the international uh, governments that are talking about other things than uh, the indigenous uh, well-being. We talk about many things like governance, we talk about oil and gas, we go, uh, talk about other things that uh, may be also important for indigenous peoples, but more important is uh, to save the culture, to save the, uh, 
they are uh, like today Icelandic person say uh, about uh, Homo Icelandicus. We have uh, the same situation, but we have uh, a different kind of attitude. I think it is important that uh, we talk about more talk about this. That what happened if the indigenous peoples disappear from the Arctic? How is pollution, climate change, and environmental degradation impacting the indigenous people of the Arctic? Yes, the indigenous peoples uh, of the Arctic talk a lot about the loss of traditional culture. Traditional culture is hunting. It's uh, eating the traditional food. It's gathering. It's uh, living on the ice, living in tundra, living in uh, any uh, piece of land which uh, is situated in the Arctic. And the pollution already made impossible to eat some of the products which are uh, daily life products of the indigenous community. They don't hunt uh, whales in uh, Chukotka, uh, particular some of the species, because they are impossible to eat. They were uh, polluted so much that it's impos impossible to cook them, to eat them. They have a specific uh, smell, taste, and uh, they just refuse to eat them. And they don't hunt them anymore, even though they have quarters, they have the permissions, but they don't do this. Uh, another thing is uh, a salmon. Salmon is the part of the culture of many uh, Far Eastern indigenous communities. And the salmon is now the restricted product uh, for the indigenous peoples. They have to buy licenses uh, to catch uh, 10 kilos of fish. Sometimes they don't have even a permission for this. So it means that uh, they, don't, they have to uh, fish something else if they have. We have, uh, uh, fortunately, some of the species with, uh, which uh, are still available, but uh, a salmon is the precious product which is uh, going to the market uh, for the Russian uh, uh, people in the central Russia. And the uh, indigenous peoples, they, are, they are simply don't have the money to pay for the uh, catching the uh, fish. And this is uh, what is happening now.